if you include carbon sequestration, that is to lock carbon into the soils, that's one of the important measures. You need to have verification procedures for that so you, that you know what the farmer, farmer should get paid for. Uh, there are remote sensing capabilities now to very accurately measure land use and land use change via satellites. And you can look, depending on the reflectance of the soil surface, whether it's no-till or till agriculture. And you use several bandwidths from the satellites to take pictures with very high spatial resolution. Uh, for some sensors, it's only 10 meters. For other sensors, it's 30 meters. And you can do that globally. There are also very good examples where it's been possible on experimental farm to build up a very uh, good soil profile with lots of carbon in it. And if that could be measured and verified and part of the carbon trading scheme, then farmers could have access to that. There are also new uh, insurance incentives where farmers can get microinsurance with regard to climate variability, which is, will also make it easier for them to take risks with the, uh, regard to uh, the crop that they have. It's not a very good international system for doing that, so we need to set that international system in place. There is a global terrestrial observing system that needs to become much more functional, just as we've got a global uh, climate observing system in place. But there needs to be similar platforms at the national level to link the uh, research Developing monitoring systems, for example, national weather stations to look at climate and weather forecasting, uh, national assessments on the status of agriculture production and appropriate policy responses. Scientists have not always been very good at interacting with various stakeholders and I think that's one of the most important things that scientists like myself need to change the way we operate. We need to have a dialogue with the stakeholders like the farmers, like the NGOs that help reach out to the farmers in both setting the scientific agenda. We need to answer the right questions and provide the answers in such a form that they are understandable for lay people. And we're not always very good at that. Governments are also organized in silos. It's the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Planning, Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of the Environment. But we know that we must address and find solutions that ensures that we get sustainable livelihood as the Ministry of Planning would like, uh, good food production as the Ministry of Agriculture wants, while sustaining the environment uh, like the Ministry of uh, Environment would like. And again, the silos and the way we have structured society doesn't help us to address these complex issues. With regard to the communication between the scientific community and the farming community, this is in many cases not very efficient. Uh, we don't reach out very well, we don't engage the farmers in setting the agenda, and we haven't developed the right methodologies for this extension. Most of this should be done by national extension services, but they are very often underfunded, and they have not developed modern technologies to reach to the farmers. You will see more and more that farmers out in the villages have mobile phones. That's one way of communicating with the farmers. They are very often illiterate, so you need new methodologies to communicate with them. It's also very important to engage the uh, farmers' associations and give them the possibility to have an adaptation fund so that they can help in this translation of the knowledge into applicable methodologies that the farmers can embrace and engage in. Uh, the, the Nobel Prize in Economics this year uh, went to one of the two prize winners was Eleanor Ostrom from the United States. She is a political scientist but she got the Nobel Prize in Economics because she demonstrated very clearly that 
Uh, for example, for forestry in East Africa, it is the local communities that help find methods that will keep the forest and increase the income to the rural poor. It's not national policies. National policies are important, but it's certainly not the only solution. It's very important that when you develop uh, solutions to the challenges, that you have to adapt those to the cultures and the norms of different societies. There is no one model that would fit all. Let me take one example. Uh, both in India and China, the use of energy at the village level is usually through fermenting night soil and uh, manure from the cattle to produce methane, which is then used for lightning and heating. When you try to transfer that to Africa, it doesn't, does not work because culturally uh, they cannot handle night soil. So it's been a totally uh, flop in trying to get that excellent methodology to another part of the world. Climate must be understood at the global level. The challenge is now to bring that global understanding down to the farm level, which is so central for sustainable development and the question of food security.